Welcome to AIM TV. I'm Roberta Wayhill, and with me today I have Michael Fairbanks. He's the director of AIM Santa Barbara, and Diego Cordero. He's a Chumash uh, student from Santa Barbara, and we're going to be talking about um, racism in America today, um, going over uh, some of the neo-Nazi activity that has been happening, and um, talking a little bit about Senate Bill 1070 of Arizona. Um, that was um, just um, instituted uh, by the uh, Arizona Senator um, regarding immigration policies. Um, so welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So um, back in April 17th, um, there was a um, neo-Nazi conference from the National Socialist Party um, and both of you had attended. Um, Diego, you came a, you know, long, a long way just to attend this conference and um, bringing some of your friends with you. When you heard about this, what, what was um, going on with you that you guys could have decided to come down and attend this and um, you know, stand up with AIM uh, in protest of the neo-Nazis? Well, um, we essentially had we'd kind of been keeping tabs on the white supremacist movement. Uh, and we, you know, were following the National Socialist Movement in particular and found out that they were uh, doing a whole campaign called Reclaim the Southwest. And, uh, of course, you know, most of us were uh, either brown or black. So, of course, this affects us and our communities. And uh, we decided to go down to L.A. to uh, both show our opposition and try to stop them if possible and definitely disru disrupt uh, their campaign. Michael, and for yourself, you know, you know the local chapter of AIM um, was down there, and they also coordinated with many other groups. Um, can you talk about that? Sure. Um, well, AIM Santa Barbara went down to Los Angeles uh, to show our support with other groups that had uh, invited, invited us to the event. Um, and we wanted to show the Native community also that... Uh, you know, we're still around, we're still gathering, and uh, we're protesting, you know, such action as, you know, the National Socialist Movement, um, preaching their nonsense about, you know, people go home, you know, people of color go home, and they're, it's their land when it's actually our land, and, you know, we're here first, and we're always going to be, and no matter what they say, it's, uh, that's the fact, and they can't erase that. So we had to show our support and voice our concerns, and opposition to the uh, the hate and their message that they were bringing. So when you arrived at the scene, it was just happening at um, the lawn at LA City Hall. Um, can you describe um, what was happening at the time when you got there, the show of force and, you know, the police involvement and so forth? Yeah, by the time uh, the group I was with had gotten there, uh, there were already um, plenty of protesters there as well as plenty of police. Um, well, there was about one line of police at that time, um, and there were already hundreds of protesters. Um, and there, the Nazis hadn't shown up yet, so we were more or less just waiting for them to come. Uh, and uh, and that, that's what we were, what, we, we didn't have much to do until, <laughs> until they showed up. Okay, and Michael? Um, well, when we got there, uh, it was before the Nazis had came. Um, we got to see some of the staging of the police force. Uh, there was a, a light, a light line that they had taken. Um, and of course, there was reinforcements that came in as soon as, you know, it was getting time for the uh, National Socialist Movement to come. And uh, they fortified their lines and they were four deep, four sections deep. Um, and they had more uh, backup that was across the street. And they were uh, sitting there waiting, and there were some around the corner that were waiting down the street uh, in their uh, tactical gear and riot gear, and they were ready to pounce on uh, us from the rear if you know if anything happened, and they were ready to pounce in, from in front of us. So the uh, National Socialists were well protected by LAPD at that point. And, uh, but we had a lot of people who were voicing their opposition to them being there and, uh, you know, uh, expressing their uh, views and opinions. Can you talk a little bit about um, the messages that they were trying to um, 
to give to the community, as um, the neo-Nazis themselves? Well, um, yeah, um, the neo-Nazis were, um, it seems like they've, they're always spewing the same um, stuff every time. It's, um, it's uh, you know, white power, they're proud, uh, nobody should be here, it's their country. Uh, everyone of color go home and here, you know, um, they're sadly mistaken because <laughs> they're the immigrants that are here and weren't even invited and they've came and stayed and, uh, you know, uh, just overflowed and just, you know, are uh, a, a, a uh, disgrace to, you know, I would say their race because, you know, there are some white people who, you know, are really proud and make you, you know, you're happy to know them. And if you compare that to someone of a Nazi, uh, you know, persuasion, it, it, they're just sick people, just very sick people. So you've been following um, this whole movement regarding, um, you know, you were talking about their campa campaign about uh, taking back the Southwest. Can you talk about, you know, what you know about um, about that campaign? Um, from from what I understand, uh, essentially what they're doing is they're they're they feel very empowered by the anti-immigrant, um, specifically anti-brown immigrant sentiment that has become popularized in the United States. You know. Uh, various groups from like the Tea Party and the Republicans right. to, you know, many other right-wing groups. Um, it's really empowered them and emboldened the Nazis. Um, and so what they're doing is they're going uh, throughout major towns in the Southwest and they're um, kind of drumming up uh, support both for anti-immigrant legislators right. and legislation um, as well as uh, trying to create a divide between the white community trying to trying to back up white supremacy and the, and the institutionalized systems that support that, um, so trying to divide the white community from the pe from the people of color, but also trying to divide people of color based on um, their status, their papers. So tr they try to divide the black community from the brown community, um, and uh, you know even try to divide the brown community against itself. Um, and the reason for doing this is, of course, a divide and conquer right. tactic. It's, it's you know as old as time itself, um, but they're able to use this whole this whole fear of the illegal immigrant that is uh, and the the kind of legitimacy that that gets because there's the legal illegal uh, issue involved, um, and so that that's a lot of what they're doing. But they also uh, are they are participating in violence already in the past year or so they've already committed several violent acts and they're stepping it up because they know that this is the time when they can get away with it because that's you know their their points of view are essentially being supported right and do you think that um, the fact that now that we have um, a black president um, in office right now now that you know I've had heard talks about the fact that you know now that these type of socialist uh, movement parties are saying, you know, we're going to have an uprising, a race uprising. The, Do you the see that? War. Yeah. Um, I, as far as that, they're always on that bent. Um, I'm sure that they that they feel that uh, uh, the black president just shows how, you know, far America's values right. have slipped or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they uh, they believe essentially that the Southwest is a place that the race war will happen and um, also of course that you know o Obama is a socialist and that he's you know he's the epitome of evil and everything un-American yeah. as well. So Michael when you arrived can you talk about the feelings that were resonating in you um, just seeing this? Um, the very first feelings that I received I, you know got when I got there was um, one very good word would be disgust, because when a, a race can, you know, harbor the the ill feelings.